I've put together 25 small steps that will lead to big changes in your overall health and wellness. Hey everyone, this is the X and Hilo podcast. I'm Eddie, glad you guys are all joining me. Hey, I'm all about bang for your buck. I'm all about trying to do as, as, as little as possible while getting massive results. I think that's what most people are really into, this Pareto principle, right? What is, what is the 20% amount of work that's gonna get 80% of the results? And I think with health and I think with wellness and I think with eating and, and drinking and exercise, all these things, it's so important for us to figure out what's gonna get us the most results quickest. Because those quick wins really do add up quickly. It helps us uh, experience uh, motivation. We Once we see results, we get motivated. Uh, it helps other people see those results, and so we're getting that affirmation from accountability and people we care about. And so what's really helpful for us is to figure out these little principles, these little changes that is gonna help us make the most impact. And so today, I've put together 25 small steps that will lead to big changes in your overall health and wellness. Now, these are going to be a number of different things. It's, it's not one big category, but you know, as a former NFL player, as a former strength coach, as someone who's been a health advocate and has been a health coach and wellness coach, I've tested kind of every form of diet exercise out there. And it's really because of my own curiosity. You know, when, you, when I think about it, I really just am kind of a nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff. But I also want to see what's going to work. You know, I read about all these different things. I've read all countless numbers of books. You're going to get some book recommendations today. I read countless numbers of books. I want to know if what I'm reading this works for me, or if it just works for certain people, or if it doesn't work for anybody. So I've tested all this different stuff out, and not all of them, as you can imagine, lead to success. And so I, I did some homework for you, and, I, and I'm going to distill some of which, of the, you know, what principles out of each diet work the best. That stuff's coming in a, in a future podcast. But for you, let's just say you're someone who's genuinely curious about being healthy, doesn't know a ton of where to start, maybe is already doing a particular diet, exercise, way of life, whatever. Great. What are a few things you can mix in that are going to add bigger changes? Like, what are you going to get big bang for your buck? So again, I put together 25 of these. Now, doing all these different diets, paleo, carnivore, you know, I've done bouts of vegan diets. I've done fasting. I've done paleo, bulletproof, whole 30, all these different things. You know, I've been able to sort of formulate my own personal wellness sort of success code. And you're going to be doing the same thing. And my hope for you is that this podcast, 25 steps that are going to lead, that are small, they're going to lead to big change in your health is actually going to help you sort of build your own personal success and wellness coast, uh, uh, code. So what are these things for you that are going to lead to massive changes? Okay. Does that make sense? Good. 25 things. What's the first thing? The first thing you need to know is to know your why. Know your why. This is all about your purpose, your vision for your own uh, your own health and wellness journey. Now, we talked about this in great detail in, in episode three. So if you haven't listened to episode three, I encourage you to go back and listen to that. But if you don't know why you're pursuing good health, you're never going to have success because it's at times going to be difficult. If, if it were easy to be healthy, Everyone would be walking around with perfect blood pressure. Everyone would be in shape. Everyone would be able to fit in their pants. And maybe a lot of us would have six-pack abs as well, right? Very few people find success and not only success in their health and wellness, but also just longevity as well. Not just day-to-day -day health, but day-to-day -day health over long periods of time. Very few people find that on accident, right? Have you ever been on diet and someone else that someone else forced you on? Right, maybe you have people that are like, you gotta do this, and you're like, okay, fine, and you did it, and they're just like calling you all the time. Maybe it's like Weight Watchers point system or something weird. Did that diet suck? Of course it sucked. Did that health wellness philosophy suck? Did that uh, exercise program suck? Oftentimes it does suck, but that's because that's someone else's passion, that's somebody else's uh, excitement for something that's driving you to do it. What you've gotta go find is your own why. Why have I decided to be healthy? Why have I decided to uh, in, come across a channel like Ex Nihilo and look for biblical principles on health and wellness? Why have I done this? Once you find your own passion and your own purpose and you discover your own why, that at times is going to be the only thing that sustains you pressing forward. There are going to be moments where you're on a diet where you have nothing left but your why. 
you're going to have no motivation. You're going to have no accountability. You're going to have people that have maybe left you in terms of following what's happening with you. You're not going to be in the mood to do it. You're going to be tired. You might even be injured. The only thing that will sustain you is your why. But here's the key. A why around why you want to pursue good health is over half the battle. It is the very thing that will get you over the top. I would make the argument that if you had if you had everything else and no why, you won't succeed. But if you just had a why and maybe a few other key things, maybe some of the things on this list, you actually could find success. You might not find the best success, but you can find some because purpose and knowing why you're healthy is that important, okay? Because tough times are going to hit. Number two. Another, number two, small changes, small steps, small principles that'll help you keep going on your diet. Setting an example for your children. Remembering that if you have a kids, and now obviously if you don't have kids, you can fast forward. This will just be brief. But if you do have kids, realizing that everything you do, your children are watching or your future children will be watching, that will help sustain you on a diet because you're going to want to set them up for success as well. There are a lot of things parents do. I'm a parent. I have, I, I'm a parent. I've got four kids. There's a lot of things that parents do they would never want their kids to do, right? Let not, let's not let this be one of those things. It's a scary thought, but those little ones are watching every single little thing you do. And oftentimes that could be really scary. They put on clothes like you. They have fun like you do. They'll say words you're not supposed to. They're not supposed to like you do. But they're also going to eat. They're going to pray. They're going to exercise. They're going to meditate like you do. And if you don't, they likely won't either, at least not until they're grown, grown, grown adult. Invest in their in your in your children's good health and give them every opportunity to live their best life by adopting a healthy a way of life in terms of eating and in terms of exercise. Um, right, what we're talking about here is a biblical vision for health and wellness. We're talking about what it means to look back at the way God originally created the world, right? In the garden, beautiful God. That people are in relationship with God. Um, they are uh, they are not separated from one another. Men and women are, are connected together and there's synchrony between them and creation and between them and God. It's this beautiful, wonderful, synchronistic picture. It's what Jesus Christ will come will bring back uh, when the kingdom of God returns. Paint that beautiful picture for your children. Let them see that, yes, we know that the, you know there are broken things happening in the world. We know that the diet, you know, our, our diets are broken or fractured. We have a fractured relationship with our food. Um, the way food is processed today is not the way it's supposed to be. And so we want to eat as close to the way God made food as possible. Help them see that. Third thing, 25 small steps to take that will lead to big changes in your health. Third thing, read at least a book a month on your health, fitness, or your soul, okay? A book, read at least a book a month on your health, fitness, or your soul. So many people work in their lives, right? You have your job, you've got your family, but very few people work on their lives. If you want success, you're gonna have to go uh, at life with more than just high school health class and a few studies that you read on the internet in your head. You're going to need a far more than that. You're going to need a volition and intention, which is good. We talked about that, but you're also going to need some additional knowledge to go with it. It's very, very, very difficult to to become a practitioner of a, a biblical uh, health and wellness or even just eating healthy, figuring out what diet to, to, to be on figuring out what foods you're allergic to um, and, and maybe have intolerances to, figuring out what exercise program to be on. If you don't have any knowledge, you're going to purely rely on one person or even two people. I would say that's probably a bad idea. You need more You need more than just one person's perspective. Um, I heard one, uh, one leader say at one point, he said, if you listen to one person, uh, you'll plagiarize. If you listen to two, uh, you'll become a clone of both of them. If you learn, to, if you listen to ten, you'll start to find your voice. And when you listen to hundreds, that's when you can actually formulate your own perspective. So, figure out which books um, will be good for you to read on your health, fitness, and soul. On the health and fitness side, in case you're like, that's not fair. Like, I don't. Well, what books do I read? Well, let me give you a couple. This book. See if I can get that in focus there. The Inflammation Spectrum. This is by Dr. Will Cole. So if you're if you're dealing with a lot of autoimmune conditions or you're dealing with chronic inflammation in your body, things like that, most of us are, by the way, uh, I would recommend this book to you, How to f how f to Find Your Food Triggers and Reset Your System. This is a good start. Uh, another book, Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? 
by Dr. Mark Hyman. Food, what the heck should I eat by Dr. Mark Hyman? If you were just wondering, like, what, where do I begin from a, from a doctor that knows his stuff, an author that knows his stuff, I would absolutely recommend anything Dr. Mark Hyman writes, but I would especially recommend this basic overall no-nonsense sort of beginner's guide. And then my favorite book to recommend to everybody is The Bulletproof Diet by Dave Asprey. Now, Dave Asprey is a self-proclaimed biohacker. He's a self-proclaimed um, father of biohacking. I don't know about any of that stuff and whether or not that's true, but what I do know is this book has been really, really helpful for me in terms of learning what um, what's helpful for longevity and what's long and what's helpful for performance. Now, all these authors, I can't speak to their character. I can't speak to how they live their lives. I don't know any of that. I don't know if Dave Asprey or Mark Hyman or Will Cole or anybody, any other author um, in, in this field is a good person or anything like that. But what I do trust is some of their credentials. And what I do trust particularly about Dave Asprey is his desire to live to 180 years old. I trust that he's motivated to do that. And I trust he's willing and motivated to share that information. And I think The Bulletproof Diet is fantastic. And all three of these books really do closely align with the ex nihilo philosophy of eating food as close to the way God made it as possible in many respects. So I would recommend those three books to you as a start, okay? Number four, 25 small steps that will lead to big change in your health. Get the junk out of your house. Get the junk out of your house. If there is junk food in your house, you're probably going to eat it. This is true for me. It's probably true for you too. Get rid of the loaf of Wonder Bread or the sugar cookies from the party that you had at your house last week. Get rid of the old chocolate cake from the birthday party. Um, don't, if you have junk food in your house and you're just beginning a journey towards good health, you're going to have a ton of different cravings in your body. It's better to get that food out of there. How many times have you walked to the refrigerator and sat down to eat and realized that you weren't going to eat anything bad, but because you saw the, I don't know, Ritz crackers or Pop-Tarts or something that someone left, um, you just decided to eat it. How many times has that happened to you? It happens to me all the time, right? My in-laws come over, they're coming to watch my kids, they bring a bunch of food over, it's kind of left over, we have a party at our house, there's leftover junk food, and it's there, I'm tempted. Now, I wouldn't eat it as much as I probably would have in the past, but it's there. Get the junk out of your house. And don't use the old excuse, I'll just eat what's left in my house and then I'll start. There's always going to be another party. There's always going to be another gathering. There's always going to be some weak moment where you and your spouse or your partner, or whatever, decides, I'm going to, like, let's go out and get takeout. And you, oh, there's always going to be a moment like that where more junk will come into the house. Get rid of it fast and start with a clean slate. And then go shopping and get everything you need. Check out the Bulletproof Diet infographic. Check out the ex Hilo Quick Start Guide to Health. You don't have to use any of those things. There's so many resources to help you get started online with a quick Google search, okay? Get all the junk out of your house. Fifth, realize that eating healthy when company is around is not rude. People often think, man, to, in, order to, in order to eat, you know, be a good host or to be a good friend, I've got to eat whatever junk that they offer me. And let me just tell you, that you're going to have to get over that. If you're going to want to eat healthy, you're going to have to deal with the, you know, the people sort of saying, oh no, it's so-and-so, they're, they're not going to eat this. Or the people that are going to want to go, just eat it, it's fresh baked blank or whatever. It's fresh baked bread, just eat it, all this stuff. And you're going to, you're going to have to battle, overcome all that stuff and get over it, right? There's going to be times where you're at a restaurant where you're going to have to order a particular meal. There's going to be times when you're at someone's house where you're going to have to say, oh, no, no bread for me. I'm just going to have this or whatever like that. Don't do that. And then don't – sometimes those aren't even real threats. We just perceive them as threats, right? We call that mental gymnastics. So that way we can justify eating all the bad food we really want to do in the first place. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Listen, your real friends are not going to mind if you have a salad or some wild-caught fish at lunch instead of the pizza or the burger. And you know, if they're your real friends like mine, they might tease you, and that's okay, and you can get over it, and you can be humble about it, keep your mouth shut, and just eat the food that you know is going to be healthy for a long time. Oftentimes, you're going to find that as you begin to see results and as you get healthier, those are going to be the same people that are emailing, texting, and calling you for health and wellness advice when you start seeing all that success. So keep that in mind. Number six, build a morning routine. Now, morning routines are so 
vastly underrated. They're so vastly underrated, but because they really help you get going in the day. They help you change a lot of different things about your life. And that's what's so important. I felt like a morning routine, I'm pulling up a uh, interesting article about this. I'm going to be using later here talking about red dyes. So get used for that. But if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing me like eyes dart around. That's what I'm doing. Um, creating a morning routine was the single greatest game changer in my life. It allowed me to enter the day like refreshed, excited, ready to go, ready to move rather than flustered and stressed out. And I have a, a 45 minute lecture on hacking your morning routine on this podcast. It's, it's you know, this is back when we were called ex nihilo health. It's further down the list, but it's 45 minutes walking you through a, a morning routine. And I think it's going to be really helpful for you. I'd recommend it, but waking up right away, um, with an alarm as late as you can possible possibly do. And then not working out, not having a silent moment, getting right on your phone, getting exposed to all that junk light, right? When you wake up, all of that is not going to help you be successful. All that's going to do is set your anxiety levels off at a high note and get you frust fl flustered when you start reading the, the news and it's all negative. So get, get off of your phone right in the morning and build yourself a morning routine that helps you be as productive as possible. Number seven, 25 steps that lead to large changes in your health. In your health. Seven, supplements are not the enemy. Granted, there are some downright dangerous supplements out there. There are supplements that are absolute trash. There are supplements that are bright colored orange and blue and, and red trying to get you all fired up to maybe get on some weird fat burner or get on some weird bulking uh, powder or something like that. Aside from that, looking for supplements that help supplement a very healthy diet that is eating as food as close to the way God made it as possible, that's that's eating grass-fed meals, pastured eggs, organic fruits and vegetables. If you're eating that diet, building and adding a few really healthy supplements to it is not going to hurt you. It's going to be very positive. Now, I'm not saying just grab your nearest multivitamin and, in fact, and throw it down your throat. In fact, many of those are absolute trash. I've got an article on that on the Exilo website. But I would say, having things like magnesium glycinate in the evening, maybe zinc with copper in the morning, maybe there's a neurotropic you can, that you might wanna use. I use things like Neurofuel or Mind Blend by Vitana, Vitanica. Those are great supplements to add in. You, maybe it's a vitamin D3 supplement, maybe it's a B complex, but something that's high quality. Adding those things into your uh, regular routine in the morning is going to be a game changer for you. The first thing I do every morning when I come down the stairs is I have my handful of supplements, my breakfast as it is. I always have a, a cup of black coffee. Every now and then I'll have a cup of Bulletproof coffee and I'll have my handful of supplements and it just sets you up for in the right frame of mind. So remember, they're not the enemy. Just because in the mid 90s, a bunch of marketers messed with some stuff and the FDA got all upset and started, and they started their anti-marketing campaign doesn't mean that going and getting healthy supplements is bad for you, okay? Number eight, shop at the farmer's market for your meat and for your produce. Now, it's not always easy to get meat at farmer's markets and sometimes it's overpriced, but let's just talk produce for a second. A great way, one, to reduce costs. A lot of people say shop, eating healthy is, is, is very expensive. Absolutely it is. A great way to reduce costs and eat, get fresh, high quality vegetables and fruits is by visiting your local farmer's market. There's people there that have grown organic food that really deeply care about the process. They're not big conglomerate companies. They care more about the little person. They care about the quality of their products. You can go pay $2 for an avocado at a place or you can get something far cheaper um, or even $4 for an avocado these days. You can pay, get a bunch of avocados for far cheaper than that. You can also get your eggs at farmer's markets. But they are game changers. Make friends with the make friends with the vendors, and sometimes they'll offer you deals that are not on the market, and we've done that in the past too. So farmer's markets, absolutely underrated for keeping costs down and for being as healthy as possible. All right, number nine. Another way to reduce costs, and this is number nine, is to shop for your meat at the farm. Buying bulk meat in bulk, grass-fed cows, um, you know, whatever it is, lamb, chicken, pork, getting this stuff in bulk from high-quality sources like local farms is, one, a great way, like I said, to reduce costs, but another way to get high, high-quality meat and support local businesses as well. Look, look, for a, look for a farm. Not all farms are created equal, but when you look, you're looking for grass-fed and grass-finished beef. 
you're looking for pastured pork, you're looking for pastured eggs, you're not you're looking for you're not looking for vegetarian fed chickens. Like chickens aren't you know, chickens aren't vegetarians. They like to eat grubs as well. You're not looking for some some diet that's been manipulated. Remember, you're looking for someone that's going to treat the animals well and feed the animals what they typically eat, not just what makes them the biggest to sell by the pound. A lot of people under a lot of people don't understand about big agriculture and big big food is that well they should understand or at least they say they understand it but it's not intuitive to them is that they're trying to make money and they're trying to make as much money as possible is that evil in and of itself i don't know i don't want to make call balls and strikes i do know the love of money is the root of all evil i do know that if you manipulate the food supply um, it absolutely has a cause and effect that hurts people, and we're seeing it play itself out, and big pharma is now benefiting from that. So one way to circumvent all of this is to find a high-quality farm that's near you, somewhere you can buy in bulk that's going to reduce the price. You can get ground beef as cheap as four ninety nine dollars a pound, which is high-quality stuff, half the price of some of the, the prices these days with all the inflation going around. You're going to save a ton of money. You're going to eat healthy. You're going to support local business. This is absolutely the best way to do that. Um, The cheapest way to eat healthy begins with a farm and a farmer's market. If you say, hey, it's really expensive, I totally understand you. I promise you that going this way, if you do this especially in bulk, is going to be a lot cheaper than headed to Chipotle or McDonald's for, for your lunch and for your dinner every single day. Number 10, 25 steps. Make exercise become normative in your routine. This seems simple, but... If exercise hasn't been a second nature thing in you yet, this is the time for you to make it second nature. Pick your intervals. You know, I like to exercise five days a week. I'm a former athlete. I love it. I think people should consider working out four to five days a week, Um, not even just for health, uh, for looking good, but even for mental health reasons and the like. Um, Find the rhythm that's good for you. Put a schedule together and go to the gym. Or if it's at the house or it's on the track, if it's outside, go. Whether it's three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. Heck, it might even be one or two times a week to start. That's okay. Get your routine going. And the, the issue is once you skip one workout, the second, uh, the second workout becomes a lot easier to skip. It just does. And then the next one's easier. And then the next one's easier. And you'll never reach your fitness goals without that consistency. You know, my, one of my old strength coaches in college used to say, it's always easier to stay in shape than it is to have to get back into shape. If you stay in shape, uh, if you stay in shape, you'll never get out of shape. And guess what? When you're out of shape and you start working out, it's, it, the workouts feel so difficult, so hard, and you get injured a lot easier. You, it's better just to stay in shape. And guess what? It's easier to stay in shape because if you're already in shape, you can t- actually take down the number of workouts you're doing and still feel and look good, Okay. Make exercise become normative. So for you, a little homework, look at the next month, schedule in on your Google Calendar, your Outlook, whatever it is, three specific times you are going to go to the gym and exercise. And even if you feel like don't feel like going, just put your gym clothes on and go. And see what happens when you get there. Number 11, crush lazy habits like TV. Okay, this can be short. Listen, we know that sitting on the couch, binging on Netflix and binging on whatever else, YouTube videos or sitting on your phone, scrolling TikTok and Instagram is not going to help you. Skip the binges and the back-to-back movie sessions. Skip the video game binges. Why? Because they create lazy habits that's easy for you to settle into. Instead, read one of the nonfiction books I gave you. Go grab one of these. Read that. You're going to learn something while, while you're sitting there. Spend some time with your kids. Go on a walk. Go on a hike. Do something active. Speaking of which, number 12, play outside. Play outside a lot. Go play outside. Run around and be free. When you talk about living a life as close to the way God originally intended as possible, the one of the things that you did not see, well, one of the things, a, many, a, a few of the things you did not see in the Garden of Eden before sin comes to the world is a television is a couch, is a bag of Lay's potato chips, and a big old covering to sit inside all day. You didn't see any of that stuff. They were in a garden, they were free to run around, enjoy life. 
People love being active, and the more active they are, the more they enjoy it. It's funny how that worked. It's no wonder why things like Tough Mudders and Spartan races are so popular. People like to go play outside. I would encourage you, sign up for an, a workout. Sign up for a mini triathlon. Sign up for a mini uh, or a half marathon or something that puts a goal out in front of you and gets you outside and gets you in the rain and gets you in the snow, gets you in the sunshine, enjoying your life. You and I, we were created for fun. We were created in adventures outdoors get out there enjoy a mountain enjoy the ocean enjoy the snow hey it's better than watching hgtv and the travel channel hoping that one day you'll get out there you're probably not if you're doing that get out there this is your opportunity number 13 25 uh, 25 changes small changes that'll lead to big changes in your health 13 restock your fridge before it's gone I'll tell you one pitfall I never saw coming. My wife and I always eat healthy, but when the fridge is empty, that's when it gets so easy to pull up DoorDash or Uber Eats or Postmates and have food delivered to your house that is sort of maybe kind of healthy, but not really that healthy because they use all sorts of hidden oils and all sorts of stuff. It's so much better to make sure you've got, you're restocking the groceries before, before you run out of those groceries. And better yet, you know, I always had a good advice I always received is never go shopping when you're hungry. Now that applies to food, it applies to all sorts of things. But the point is, if you're hungry while you're shopping, you're gonna buy all sorts of stuff that you never would have bought. And the same is true when your fridge is empty, you're gonna go to the store and your eyes are gonna get big and gonna get all this stuff and you're gonna get desperate and you're gonna probably order some takeout as well, okay? Make sure you're doing that, that's a huge cheat code. 15. 25 small steps that lead to big change in your health. Blend your greens. Blend your greens. Greens, I'm talking about leafy green vegetables and maybe other vegetables. Like the servings is, really you need about eight servings of greens a day. And notice, I said greens. I didn't say sweet potatoes or corn. Green beans, sweet potatoes, and corn are not vegetables. Okay? I think it's funny how when you go to a restaurant, you say, I would like a side of vegetables or something, and out comes the carrot, uh, out comes the corn and the potatoes and the green beans. Just because green beans are green does not mean they're potatoes, or does not mean they're vegetables, geez. Um, and, and so just because they're green doesn't mean they're vegetables. They are legumes, and legumes can be problematic for a lot of people, and they have more carbs than you're thinking, so you have to be careful. You need greens packed with phytonutrients that will help uh, fight off poor health and provide all sorts of different uh, nutrients and vitamins for you. Get a Vitamix and pulverize your veggies into a delicious, healthy smoothie. Add some citrus fruit or some berries, and that will really up your game. I put together uh, my inflammation scavenger smoothie. I love it. It's really, really great for inflammation, obviously, in your body. Um, I would encourage you to go check that out on the Exnihilo site and start drinking one of those a day because, honestly, it'll take your game to another level. The point is, Make sure you get those greens. One way to do that is to drink them. It's a lot easier sometimes than choking them down, especially if you're just starting. 16, limit sugar to 30 grams a day. There is no reason why an adult in this day and age needs more than 30 grams of sugar a day. Now, maybe on a special occasion, there's something happening. Okay, fine. Sugar's tasty, but it's not really your friend. High sugar can crush your immune system. It can crush your ability to fight cravings. It'll reset all your cravings, to be sure. If you've ever been on a ketogenic diet and then gone off of it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that can lead to all sorts of blood sugar issues. If you're continually eating tons of sugar, it can lead to things like in insulin resistance, uh, diabetes, even things like hormone imbalances. Even fruit, which we love, is high in fructose, and that led directly to your liver for blood insulin spike. That can sometimes be problematic. Don't make the mistake of chomping down on all sorts of vegetables and thinking that you're being healthy just because you're only eating vegetables like pineapple and peaches and you know oranges and stuff like that. Those are high in sugar, and you should be careful with those too. Stick to small amounts of low sugar, antioxidant things like blueberries, raspberries, all the berries, and even citrus fruits like lemon and lime. Great limes, by the way, lemons, cheat code for vitamin C in the morning. Um, those things can keep that fruit level down. But you shouldn't be eating a bunch of baked goods, especially carb-heavy foods with sugar in them like muffins and cakes and things like that. You're setting yourself up to go insulin resistant, which is going to lead to all sorts of other chronic disease issues. 17. Try going natural for your small sicknesses that you experience. 
Now, instead of heading right to quick care for antibiotics, right, that is going to destroy, it's going to add antibiotics, things like ibuprofen are atom bombs on your gut biome. Your gut biome is this a wonderful collection of all the bacteria in your stomach that helps really make you who you are. I'd recommend um, Dr. David Perlmutter's book on it, Brain Maker. I would really encourage that book, uh, encourage you to read that book um, because he talks about how the gut biome really makes you who you are in many ways. It leads to the ways you think, it leads to, it leads to the ways you act out things. And so atom bombing your gut biome with medications when they really maybe aren't that necessary, can be really painful. Instead, look for natural remedies, upping your vitamin C, upping your vitamin D. You can try an IV drip with some B vitamins, some minerals, things like that. Always really good. Dr. David Perlmutter said once, if you take antibiotics, you'll be sick for a week. But if you just ride out the sickness, you'll be sick for seven days. <laughs> and I think his point is to say, you really don't get that much better that faster with antibiotics, especially if you've just got a cold or a virus. In emergency situations, you go to the doctor, that's one different, but a sm stomach bug or the sniffles, there's no reason to put drop an atom bomb on your gut. There's no reason to do that, okay? 18, do a 20-minute stretch rollout session once a week. Now, as a former athlete, I love this ex example because I just know all the myofascial adhesions that you get over time. You know, the IT band and the quad and the hamstrings and the hips and all this stuff and your shoulders and back, they just get knotted up and you get headaches, you get tension, you get poor posture and all that stuff. This can really, really save you a ton. It's just a small amount. 20 minutes stretching and rolling out once a week is a small amount, but it can lead to big changes. Now, ultimately, we'd love you to work out to more, work up to more than this. Ideally, maybe you get in some time before every workout. Uh, maybe you spend 15, 20 minutes every day, ultimately. Um, maybe you spend an hour doing it on, on special days or before a race or something. But for now, 20 minutes stretching or rolling out once a week. A rollout essentially is a foam roll where you roll your muscles, you find the, that adhesion, you sit on it, you break it down and floss it out a little bit and you release it. Kelly Starrett, uh, becoming a supple leopard, his, uh, his mobility wads on YouTube, fantastic to learn how to do this. I'd recommend him to you. 19, this is one of my favorites. Don't say I can't when it comes to your diet. Don't say I can't when it comes to your exercise. Say I won't. This is a mindset thing, but you're not a prisoner for eating healthy. You are making a deliberate choice not to eat junk. So you are empowering yourself to make the right health choices. So when someone says, um, will you eat this brownie? Don't say, well, I can't. I can't eat the brownie. No, it's I won't eat the brownie because I'm making the decision not to eat the junk food. You can't, don't say I can't have a drink this weekend or I can't have a, um, an extra serving of whatever. Say I won't. I won't have it because I have made the decision that I'm in control of my health and I want what's best for me. Besides, usually you'll find that the people that are saying I can't are usually the ones eating junk because they can't stop because they're cravings are so out of control because they're horm they're having hormone issues and they have insulin resistance and their their blood sugars all over the place. You don't want to be in that spot. Many of us are. One way to help is to change the way you think about how you engage your food. Don't say I can't, say I won't. Number 20. This isn't going to be hard for some of you, okay, but it's love your coffee and love your tea. Remember guys, enjoy your morning coffee or tea. Sit around, it's another mindset, scene, uh, mindset thing. Sit at your table in the morning, grab a book, some morning reading, a, a, the Bible, scripture, and just sip your coffee, sip your tea, enjoy the slowness of it. One theologian says that margin is, the, is God's window into the soul. That when you sit and you're quiet, you have an opportunity for God to speak to you. And why not sit there with a cup of coffee redeemed, made by God himself, roasted coffee beans, tea leaves, and enjoying something wonderful. Um, just don't sit back with a caramel frappuccino from Starbucks and play on your phone, play on your Instagram, uh, in your car on the way to work. Don't do that. That's not so fun. That's not so relaxing. Aim for a quality drink like some yerba mate tea, a 
Bulletproof Coffee, Grassed Butter, Brain Octane, MCT Oil, or just plain old milk, plain old coffee and sit there and relax and enjoy yourself. Enjoy a book, enjoy the scripture, and get some margin back in your life. Number 21, 25 small changes that lead to big changes in your health. Learn a new sport or hobby. Now, this is one of my favorites. Find something that lights you on fire. Find like basketball, mud run. We talked about these Spartan races, mountain biking, marathoning, volleyball tournament. Get something on the calendar that is awesome, that excites you. Do it with some friends. Pay for it so you're motivated to keep it and then work your way towards being the best you can at it. And then want that day when you get to celebrate running the marathon, the half marathon, the Spartan race, the Tough Mudder, the basketball tournament, whatever it is, all of a sudden you get to relax and be excited and know, man, I did it. I worked hard and I learned something new and I challenged myself. The people that stop growing are the people that stop trying new things. Don't stop trying new things. Get something on the calendar. For me, I love having a race or something, some event on the calendar that keeps me motivated so I can press forward and make sure I have the adequate motivation to finally reach my goal. There's going to come a time. I love this is by the way, this is why I absolutely love this kind of stuff. I had a coach <clears throat> that used to say, There is going to ta- come a time where everyone will know what you did and didn't do to prepare for this. I think that's true. That's why I love that. I want that accountability so that I know that I'm going to be ready for whatever race or event it's going to be. Learn a new sport or hobby. 22. We're almost there, guys. <clears throat> Track your health with some wearable tech. Now, if you're just a techie like me and you love phones and playing on computers and all that stuff, this is great motivation for you. You can pair your excitement for a health and wellness journey with your love for technology. Get yourself like a Samsung S gear watch, a new Apple watch, right? A Fitbit surge, something like that. And bring in a social element app to sort of track and compete with your friends, how many steps you're getting, how much movement you had. This will help you keep up with your friends and it also motivate you guys all to do something together. So this is a fun way to do that. And most of you probably already have one of these. So you might as well put it to the act, one of the actual uses it was created for instead of just using it to text your friends. 25 small steps that lead to big change in your health. Third one, or 23rd one. Make sleep a priority with a sleep tracking app or sleep tracker, okay? Track your sleep, make changes to give yourself the best sleep possible with all sorts of different things. Like there's the Aura Ring, which has an opportunity to do this. My favorite sort of cheaper option is the app Sleep Cycle. You put the app under your mattress, you put it on your side table and it tracks your sleep with the noise and the movement that you're making. It's really simple and you'll be surprised at how addicting it is to start making changes to your sleep to see what's causing some of the challenges you're experiencing in your sleep. And at the end of it, it gives you a sleep score. So it'll tell you, oh, 88%. You know, 89%, whatever, 100%, 60%, 10%. And then from there, you're able to track, well, what did I do today? Oh, I drank coffee late. I stayed up the night before. I was working with, uh, on my, I was on my phone all night. And you'll be able to actually build statistics out for what causes you to lose sleep and what doesn't. It's really, really cool. Sleep, you do one third of your life. That should be incredibly important to you. Make sure your sleep is good. Number 24, lose the idea that eating healthy is expensive. There are cheaper ways to eat healthy. Farmers markets we talked about, farms are easy ways to get premium quality food for cheap. It can be expensive walking in a Whole Foods or you know some other health food store and just buying stuff off the shelves. Totally get that. That's why you should opt for defined cheaper ways. There's things like butcher box, there's a deliver to your door meats and vegetables locally and nationally that will, will sort of source vendors and put together these boxes. That is a very cheap option to get you eating the right food, uh, getting the right meats and getting the right foods and vegetables. And it'll help you buy in bulk as well. So you'll have some leftovers, especially in regards to meat. Um, People always say, well, it's just so much easier to eat healthy at McDonald's or something like that. Well, first of all, it's not that cheap anymore. I don't know when's the last time you've been to McDonald's or, but like these meal or Carl's Jr. or whatever, Burger King, these places are getting expensive. They're seven, eight, nine, ten dollars for a a combo meal. That's not that cheap anymore. You're better off going to get some chicken, some rice, some um, some sweet potatoes from the store and making out multiple meals and having healthy food. Even grass-fed butter is not that expensive and that's a really high quality superfood. So 
it lose the idea that eating healthy is expensive. It's not. It's it's expensive if you go to Whole Foods and you buy lamb ribs and you know you eat you cook with the best of best everything. But you don't have to do that to be healthy. Um, just like to eat junk food, you can don't have to pay the minimum amount. You can actually spend a, quite a bit on junk food. Ask Cheesecake Factory or something like that how expensive their junk food is. Right? You can you can spend a lot of money on health food, and you can spend a little bit of money on health food. I'd encourage you to do some research with some of the resources I've given you. And then lastly, 25 small steps that lead to big changes in your health. Just enjoy the process of growth. Remember, you're never done growing. Life is is a long thing. It's a long time. It's a long pursuit striving towards a goal. So you might as well settle in and enjoy your process. You're going to find out if you enjoy the journey, not just the destination, you're going to start looking forward to each day as an opportunity to get better and enjoying how God made you to thrive in that sort of environment. A big reason why people quit their wellness and health journey is because they don't enjoy the process of growth. And in order to be successful in anything, you've got to start to enjoy the process. Like Steve Kerr, the Golden State Warriors head coach, he talks about how he, he instills in all his players to play with joy. This is something I do with my kids when they play sports, basketball, football, soccer, whatever. Talk about playing with joy because joy is such an important part of the process. When you're practicing, when you're eating healthy, if you enjoy that process, you're going to so much more enjoy um, and reap the benefits of the result as well. Okay, that's it. 25 small steps that will lead to big changes in your health. I hope that was helpful for you. But there is one thing on my mind I want to I want to talk about as we end today's show. I was re- I was reading the news Fast Company. I don't know if you read you read that news site, but you can also go on New York Times or Wall Street Journal talked about it. I want to say New York New York Post, New York Times. They all they all talked about it. And it's this thing that happened in California that California banned uh, red food dye um, in the whole state, and now it's not going to go into it's not going to you know, take hold for a few years. But they did ban red food dye, and this is a big deal. Because I don't know if you know, but a lot of stuff has been coming out about red food diet. It's been happening actually for a very, very long time. We've been talking about this. In fact, I think it was 1990. I'm trying to pull up the article. That's right. Um, The FDA banned the use of red dye 3 in cosmetics in 1990 after evidence showed it caused cancer in lab animals. So for cosmetics. But the government has not, and we're talking, what is that, 33 years later, has not prohibited its use in food. And it's still an ingredient in a lot of food. So here's the article, the Fast Company article here. These foods and snacks will be uh, impacted by California's ban on harmful additives. And it shows us a little bit here what are some of the foods that are in this stuff. And I'll scroll down here to red dye number three. What you can see, these are some of the things that are in this stuff. Decoration and chips and, and, and chips for baking, ice cream cones, frostings, icings, soft candy, gummies, meal replacement drinks, toaster pastries, cookies, ice pops, frozen fruit bars, baby food, and hard candy. Baby food, yeah. That is just red dye number three. Look at potassium bromate. This is a, another, it's a sand-like powder, powder and a, a possible carcinogen, which means it could cause cancer. And then there's brominated vegetable oil, which is used in all sorts of things, including sodas. There is so much crap, so much junk in the food supply in America. And, and uh, the, the, the United States has some of the most lenient food laws out of all. Um, products affected by California's food ban that go into effect 2027. I'll just read a few of you, a few of them for you. Hostess Ding Dongs, right? Some of your favorite. Peeps Marshmallows, Candy Corn, Dole Fruit Cups. Yes, the thing you thought you were handing your kid is Dole Fruit Cups is causing all sorts of problems in them. Cinnamon Rolls, Honey Glazed Buns by Sara Lee, Betty Crocker Red Decorated Icing, um, Orange Jet, Stars and Stripes Soda, Sun Drop Sodas, other citrus sodas like Walmart brands, Dollar General brands, ShopRite brands, Food Lion, and then other baked goods like Auntie Annie's, Hy-V, H-E-B, Best Choice, all sorts of stuff. The potential issues you'd experience on eating some of this stuff Especially think you're gonna you're gonna experience things like inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's disease, uh, ulcerative colitis. Those are issues. You know, again, carcinogens could possibly lead to cancer. Much more is, uh, research is needed, but there's all sorts of correlations between red food dye 
and things like ADHD and ADD, especially in children. Anecdotally, I've known people that have pulled out red food dyes out of their kids' diet and seen marked change, marked change in their children's behavior. Those are things to consider. All sorts of this food. Now, how do you find this stuff in your food? Well, usually it's on the back of your uh, of your wrapper because usually you know, nothing natural has this this science experiment in it. But it goes by all sorts of different names. Allura Red AC, Red 40, Red 40 Lake, FD&C Red Number 40, Aluminum Lake, E129. You can't be too careful. These food companies do their best to try, once things get banned, to try to put other names on them and change ingredients and slip the same thing in there. They've done that with MSG for a long time, and they're doing to do it with Red Red Dye 40. It's going to continue to happen. Red Dye 40, Red Dye 3, all this stuff. Here's my advice to you. You know, I'm not a doctor. This is just my opinion. Let me just tell you what I think. You should eat, strive to eat food as close to the way God made it as possible. Uh, what, what, one of the things that's happened as a result of the fall of man is that human beings have gotten their grubby little paws all over God's creation. And we're trying to make money. We're trying to be efficient. We're trying to be fast. And sometimes our interests don't align with what God's interests are. And a lot of times they don't. As it comes to the food supply, we're all about marketing. So the colors, we're all about taste. So the flavors, we're all about making as much money as possible. So we'll fatten the food, the animals up to make them as big as possible as we sell them by the pound. And sometimes those do not align uh, with what's best for our bodies. So you have to be in charge of your own health. No one's going to be in charge of it for you. You've got to be the one who is constantly sticking up for yourself, researching for yourself, and making sure you're eating what's healthy. Protect you and protect your family. All right, well, that's the end of the show for today. Hey, if you're on YouTube, will you do me a favor? Like the cha- like the episode, subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, follow or subscribe to the podcast if you like the show. Ex Nihilo, remember, is all about uncovering the way you were created to be. What is the way God originally intended human, human beings to be? That includes our diet, exercise, wellness, health, our spirituality included in that. And so this is all about helping you understand all of the brokenness that sort of seeped into the world through sin and how we can sort of reclaim some of what we lost in the garden, of course, by God's will and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, that's it for this time. I'll see you in the next one.